Well, hello, my sugar beasties. Janine here from That's Cakeable, and I'm looking forward to bringing you this week's tutorial because we got a giveaway involved. That's right, in this week's tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to make this vintage rose cake with gold polka dots and edible lace. In order to achieve the results I did, I used some amazing products from Moorish Cakes. And here they are, more moist and more curl. These products are absolutely magical. The More Curl creates natural looking curled edges on wafer paper petals without any effort or tools. And the More Moist revitalizes wafer paper, making it easy to curl, vein, and revitalize from its older state. But I found another use for it, and you'll see what that is during this tutorial. The amazing Monica from Moorish Cakes has gifted me two sets of More Moist and More Curl, and I really want you guys to give it a go. So, it's time for a giveaway. All you have to do to win is, of course, subscribe to my YouTube channel, head on over to my Instagram, the link's in the description below, and leave a comment on this week's cake photo. In the comment, make sure you hashtag, I want more. And that is it. You're in the chance to win one of two bundles of the More Moist and More Curl from Moorish Cakes. This giveaway is available for anybody worldwide and I'll choose the two winners at random next weekend on February the 30th. Super, super simple. Well, I've rambled plenty enough. Let's get on with the tutorial. So I'm starting this project off by making my wafer paper roses. So here I've got some wafer paper that I've colored using my edible image printer. And I'm going ahead and cutting out some two inch circles from that wafer paper. If you don't have a circle cutter, of course you can freehand it, that would be fine. I then go in and use a one and a half inch circle cutter to cut some more circles. Then I'm cutting around the excess so I've got room to access my little itty bitty one inch circle cutter. Once again, you can go ahead and do this freehand. And there are many ways you can color wafer paper like airbrush, petal dusts, but this is the way I chose. I love the motley color. Now I'm preparing the center of my rose. So I've got some 18 gauge wire here and I'm making a little hook in the end with some needle nose pliers, just like that. Adding some hot glue to the end and I've opted to use a foam rose cone. You of course can make this out of gum paste. That would work just fine. Okay, hold on to your knickers because this is where the magic happens. I've got a plain old cooling rack here and I'm laying out all of those petals I've just cut. And now I'm taking the amazing More Curl Wafer Paper Moisturizer from Moorish Cakes to make these petals come to life. I spray them on one side firstly. Then I flip them on over and I spray them on the other side. And then the magic happens. You can see these petals are curling already. This stuff gives wafer paper petals a natural curl without any effort whatsoever. And there they are, ready to go. Some more curled than others, which is exactly what you want for a more realistic flower. Now I'm taking some Tylose glue and coating the entire rose cone. And I take one of the small petals and wrap that around. This part can be a little bit fiddly, just persist and you will get there. And then I'm tucking another petal, small petal, under the first petal and wrapping that around into a cone shape. Now I know a lot of this footage isn't perfect. I'm sorry, you wouldn't think I've been making videos for over two years, would you? But you will see the entire process as we go along. It's the same process for every single layer, but the center layer is just curled a lot more tightly. I'll go ahead and add another three petals on the center there just to make it a little more realistic. Plus it covers up any of the white that you can see on that rose cone so it won't be visible when we add the rest of the petals. Repeating around nice and tightly. Everything just sort of works in a swirl. You'll see what I mean shortly. And that is the center done. Please excuse my fingers. I've got a mark from a burn, plus all the color from the wafer paper has bled onto my fingers. Fun of the trade. So with the next size up, which is one and a half inches, I'm taking a small pair of scissors and cutting a slit around halfway up the center of those petals. Then I'm taking some Tylose glue, placing it on one side of the slit, 
and flipping it over and attaching it. Now this makes a bit of a cup, which makes the rose look a little more realistic, plus it makes it easier to attach it to the rose cone. Now I can show you a little more visually how I attached my petals. So I take the first petal, put some Tylose glue on the left hand side of the petal and push that against the rose cone. I open up the right hand side of the petal and then with the next petal I do exactly the same thing, tucking it under the right hand side of the first petal. Push that down, open up the right hand side of the next petal, add some Tylose glue. With the left hand side of the third petal, I push that against the rose cone and tuck the right hand side back over the top of that third petal, so on and so forth until you reach the end. Tylose glue, tuck that under. And then when you get to the very end, tuck the first petal underneath the last petal and wrap it all around. And that's the first lot done. I then went ahead and did another row of the one and a half inch circles around the outside. lifting and tucking and spiraling and lifting and tucking and spiraling until you get to the end. There's no hard and fast rule here. You put as many petals on as you visually like. Ta-da! Now onto the two inch petals. Look at the curl. Do you see what I mean? Do you see how magical more curl is? I could not have done that without the magic of more curl. With the outer layers, you do exactly the same thing, just letting it fan out slightly more. I ended up doing two rows of those also. Of course, you can keep going and make your rows as big as you wish. The beauty of wafer paper is that I can manipulate those petals to how I like them. Now I'm just going to set that aside to dry for a little bit. And then once it's dried off a little, I'm taking some gel food colour mixed with some decorator's alcohol and I'm spraying the outside of it to even out the colour. Now once again, you could use an airbrush or petal dust for this, but um, quite frankly, I'm lazy. So that's what I did. Once again, I set that aside for a little bit longer to dry and I'll come back to that to finish it off later. Now I'm going to make some leaves. So to make the leaves, once again, I've printed some green on some wafer paper with my edible image printer. And I'm freehanding this baby because, uh, well, like I said, I'm lazy. So I fold the paper in half and I just take some scissors and cut out some general leaf shapes. Now I'm taking some Tylose glue and placing some Tylose glue down the centre of the leaves. I've got some 22 gauge wire here that I'm placing in the centre of one of the leaves. A bit of Tylose glue around the outside and I place the other leaf, the matching leaf, straight on top. None of them match perfectly, but that was fine. I just went in with some scissors afterwards, trimmed them up and made them nice and neat. And that's the leaves. I made a few of those so that I had some to fill in any bare spots later. Now that rose has dried, I'm bringing it back and I'm deliberately cracking some of those petals. I want a vintagey, potpourri sort of look and uh, this definitely helps with that aesthetic. There's my colour palette and all my little roses. Of course, you can choose any colour palette you wish. Now this is the little method I've invented of creating the perfect gold edible polka dot. You don't want them too raised from your cake and I found this way was the best way to achieve it. Once again, using the amazing More products. This is More Moist, which is a wafer paper moisturizer. I'm using that on some wafer paper until it's just a little bit tacky. 
Now I tried this with water, vegetable shortening, and piping gel and it did not work. The wafer paper broke away from the gold leaf and it just didn't look any good. So I'm taking some gold leaf and that paper that I've just moistened. I'm putting the wafer paper over the gold leaf, pressing nice and firmly. Flip it over, remove the backing paper off the gold leaf. And there it is, absolutely stunning. And it didn't break away from the paper like all of the other methods I tried. Once again, this is all thanks to More Moist. I then cut the excess wafer paper off and take my one inch circle cutter and cut out some beautiful little polka dots. Perfect, gold, flat, gorgeous. Of course I went ahead and made quite a few of those. Now there's no point having beautiful polka dots if they're not placed evenly on the cake, right? So I'm using a five inch cake. I've taken a five inch round cake board and just traced around the outside on a plain piece of A4 paper and then I cut around that so we have a five inch round. I then fold that in half. I don't do math so folding was great. There's a lot of folding here. Fold it in half again and that in half once again. Now I'm taking a piece of string and with one of those little pie sections, like, you know, on the, what's the game? What's the game? Trivial Pursuit Pie. I'm just measuring one of those sections from one side to the other on the outside. And now my cake is seven inches high, so I'm marking a seven inch mark, as well as another half inch little step at the top. And you'll see what that's for shortly. I take that piece that I've measured on the size of our little pie and I measure that width ways on the paper. Now I'm just ruling right up the side and I mark at that seven inch mark plus that little half an inch for a step. Sort of doing perforation marks here so I know that that's my little step. And then I just go ahead and cut that out. Up to the seven inch mark, the little half inch step and cut that out. Now I decided at this point that the polka dots would be placed too far apart. So once again, just some folding. I just folded that in half. So I've got my guideline there and cut that right up the center. And I was much happier with that size. Now for some more folding, I'm folding over that little step at the top firstly. Then I'm folding that paper in half. Then I fold it in half once again, which is where I should have stopped. It's all going to depend on the size of your polka dots. My polka dots were way too large to have done it as many times as I did. So I changed it later, but it's going to depend on what look you want. And now we have plenty of little marks on our paper for us to mark out with some pen. So I'm using two different colored pens here. So I know one is for the polka dots that are on the left hand side and the blue here is for the polka dots that are on the right hand side. This will all make sense in a moment. And that's your little measuring stick. So as you can see, I actually did go quite a lot shorter and I had a longer measurement between my polka dots. And now I'm using that little step that we made at the top to hold that securely on the top of the cake. With my more pointy tool, another amazing tool from the more range, I'm making marks on my cake using my little measuring stick there. I haven't put arrows on these ones, but I know what's what. So one's for the right hand side, one's for the left hand side. Just use some piping gel there so I know exactly where my polka dots are going. It's harder to see on a black cake. If you want to know how I cover my round cakes with sharp edges, I will put a link in the description of how I do that. I add a little bit of piping gel behind my polka dot and then with a gloved hand, press it nice and firmly against the cake. We have the perfect gold flush polka dot on our cake. And using those measurements, they're going to be perfectly spaced too. Stunning. Now that we've got our first polka dots on, we're going to place the measuring stick back up. And as you can see, those polka dots on the left are measuring up with the orange lines. So we make marks on the blue lines on the right side. Where those marks are are where our next line of polka dots go. Stunning. 
same again, they are now measuring up with the blue line, so we mark the orange lines. And that's where our next polka dots go. So you end up with perfectly spaced, beautiful, flush, flat, perfectly gold polka dots. The last thing to do was to attach the flowers to the top of this cake. Now I'm using my more pointy tool and just making holes in the top of my cake and placing the flowers directly in the cake. But this is a dummy cake. So of course, if you're using real cake, don't forget to protect those wires to make sure they're nice and food safe. Now don't panic about the wires showing because I've got another beautiful little decoration to add later on that adds to the entire aesthetic of this cake. Flowers are attached. Now it's time to add a few of those little leaves that we made. And now let's cover those wires with my magic trick. It's not really a magic trick at all, but it looks great. So here I have some black edible lace. Now, confession, I've never once bought edible lace mixture in my life. I've always made it myself. So I'll put a link in the description below where I found the recipe to make my edible lace. It's super, super simple and super effective. I take pieces of the edible lace and sort of concertina them into a fan shape, put a little bit of water at the base of them to make it nice and moist, and I place them around the backs of those flowers. Slowly hiding all of those wires. Use my concentration face. I'm using my paintbrush there just to make sure that it's nice and attached. Some smaller pieces in the top to cover those wires. And that, guys, is it. My vintage wafer paper rose lace and gold polka dot cake. What a stunner. Guys, that's how you make this vintage wafer paper rose cake with the perfect gold polka dots and edible lace. Don't forget to follow the directions. I'll put them in the description below also to be in the running to win a more moist and a more curl for yourself. Like I said, I've got two sets to give away. Well guys, thank you for joining me again this week. And if you get your hands on some of this stuff, you are definitely going to want to go and get your cake on. I guarantee it. See you next time, guys. Bye-bye.